Lesson 9.2, relate hundredths and decimals. We can write hundredths as a fraction or as a decimal. Here we have 100 equal parts in this big square, and one of them is shaded in. One of 100 equal parts is shaded in. It's one hundredth. Here we have it written as a decimal. We can see our place values. We have our ones, our decimal point. We have zero tenths. We have only one hundredth. So we have a zero point zero one. This is one hundredth. It's one of one hundred equal parts. As we learned in video 9.1, which is linked in the description, decimal place values are based on the number 10 as tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and so on. And the place value of a decimal tells us the denominator when it's written as a fraction. We can look at the place value chart and see the seven is in the hundredths place. That tells us when we write it as a fraction, it's going to be over 100. It tells us the denominator. We have seven one hundredths or seven hundredths. Seven squares are shaded out of these 100 squares. Seven of 100 equal parts is shaded. It's seven hundredths. In this place value chart, we can see there's a two in the ones place. There's a zero in the tenths place and a seven in the hundredths place. That means we have two whole, 100 out of 100 and 100 out of 100 are shaded. So that's two whole. Then only seven out of 100 are shaded here. We have two and seven hundredths. We have two and seven hundredths. We use a zero as a placeholder in the tenths place, so we can write that there are zero tenths and seven hundredths. Here we have a number line, and it goes from zero hundredths to one hundred hundredths. And we can look closely at this number line to see each hundredth. If we zoom in this area, it will look like this. We have zero hundredths, and we've zoomed in to see 20 hundredths, which is right here. And we can see all the little tick marks in between. We have five hundredths, 10 hundredths, 15 hundredths. This little mark right here is one hundredth. It's written as a decimal, as a 0 0.01, and it's written as a fraction as one hundredth. See? So that would be two hundredths, three hundredths, four hundredths, five hundredths, and we can keep on going. We can see zero hundredths as zero and a decimal point and a zero zero. Two, it goes up to ninety-nine hundredths as a zero, a decimal point, and a nine nine. And they represent the numbers between zero and one. Here we have same size models. This one's divided into 10 parts and the other one's divided into 100 parts. And the same amount is shaded. This one is 7 tenths because it's split into 10 equal parts. And this one is 70 one hundredths. It's 10 times as many parts because the parts are smaller. We can see that this one bar right here in this model was split into 10 parts. 7 tenths is equal to 70 hundredths. Here we have a place value chart and we can see there's a one in the ones place, there's a three in the tenths place, and a five in the hundredths place. We have one and 35 hundredths. We have one whole, that's the one. Then we have 35 filled in, shaded in, 
here out of 100, we have we can count by tens, 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. There are 35 shaded out of 100. We have 1 and 35 hundredths. And the digit farthest to the right tells us the place value. See? The 5 is in the hundredths place. We know our denominator will be a 100. And we know that 35 were shaded out of the 100. The one whole means that 100 of the 100 areas here were shaded. Same numerator and denominator, so it equals one whole. So here we have 100. Here we have 35 more. That's 135 are shaded in all. We could say we have 135 hundredths. That would be a fraction greater than 1. We could take out a 100 one hundredths and make it into a 1 whole and have 35 hundredths as the fraction part of the mixed number. For whole numbers, the digit farthest to the left tells us the place value. We can see this 2 is in the hundreds place. We know we have 234. For decimal place values, we use the digit farthest to the right. We know we have hundredths here. We have 234 and 5 hundredths. Remember when we read a decimal, we read the decimal point as the word and. 234 and 5 hundredths. And to avoid mistaking a decimal's number place value or to remind us to look for a decimal point, we write a zero in the ones place to the left of the decimal point as zero and zero hundredths, zero and one hundredth, zero and two hundredths, zero and three hundredths, zero and four hundredths, zero and five hundredths, and so on. We can look at this number line to see the related mixed numbers and decimals. We have three and zero hundredths. It's the whole number three, and there is nothing in the hundredths or the tenths place. We have three and ten hundredths. It's written as a three, a decimal point, a one in the tenths place, and a zero in the hundredths place. We need to locate the fraction, then write it as a decimal. We have 3 and 45 hundredths. And we look at our number line, we see the numerators 0, 10, 20, 30. Here's 40 hundredths. We have 3 and 40 hundredths as a decimal here. We need to find 3 and 45 hundredths. Well, here's 50 and 45 is in between 40 and 50. It must be right there. Now we need to write it as a decimal. We write our whole number 3, our decimal point, a 4 in the tenths place, and a 5 in the hundredths place. Now we need to find 3 and 14 hundredths. We can see here's 0 hundredths, 10 hundredths, 20 hundredths, it's going to be in between the ten hundredths and the twenty hundredths. This must be fifteen hundredths. We need fourteen. It must be this tiny little number right here to the left of this middle mark. That would be ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. It would be right there. Now we need to write it as a decimal. We write our three whole number a decimal point, a 1 in the tenths place, and a 4 in the hundredths place. We need to write the fraction or mixed number and the decimal shown by the model. When we look at this model, we know there's 100 in all. We can count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. 47 of these parts are shaded out of 100. 
we can write that as a fraction. That's 47 hundredths. We can write it as a decimal. We write a decimal point, a 4 in the tenths place, and a 7 in the hundredths place. We have 47 hundredths. Now look at this one. We have one hole filled in. So we know we're going to have a whole number. So this is going to be a mixed number. We have a one hole. And as a fraction, we can count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 31, 32. 32 of 100 are shaded. Our mixed number is 1 and 32 hundredths. We can write this as a decimal. We write our whole number 1, our decimal point, a 3 in the tenths place, and a 2 in the hundredths place, 1 and 32 hundredths. Let's take a look at these two models. We have model A and model B, and it says they're equal to each other. Well, both models have 12 hundredths, or 0 and 12 hundredths, shaded. We have 10, 11, 12. Let's look at this one. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Going on a diagonal from corner to corner are 10 parts. Then we have 11 and 12. They both represent the same amount, but we can see how many are shaded in model A quicker because of the arrangement of the shaded parts. We know that's 10 and 2, it's 12. That's much quicker than having to count them when they're spread all over the place. But both models have 12 hundredths shaded. Here we have two place value tables. We can see there's a two in the tens place, a five in the ones place, and a three in the tenths place on this chart. We can write how many are in each place value. We see there are two in the tens place. That's two tens. We can see there are five in the ones place. We have five ones. We have a three in the tenths place. We have three tenths. And we have nothing in the hundredths place. There's no number there at all. So that would be zero hundredths, wouldn't it? On this place value chart, we see two in the tens place. We see five in the ones place. We see a three in the tenths place. And we see a zero in the hundredths place. 25 and 3 tenths is equal to 25 and 30 hundredths. Since both decimals have the same amount of tens, ones, tenths, and hundredths, they are equivalent decimals. So even though this one has a zero in the hundredths place, they are equivalent decimals. We can actually place any amount of zeros to the right of a decimal number, and they will all represent the same shaded amounts. One tenth would be the same as ten hundredths, which would be the same as one hundred thousandths, and so on. It's the same as placing zeros to the left of a whole number. Here we have a whole number five. If we put a zero in the tens place, we still have five whole. And if we put a zero in the hundredths place and the tens place, we still have five whole. So it doesn't matter how many zeros we put in front of the whole number, we still have five whole. That's the same thing with decimals. We can put as many zeros as we want after this number one, and it's still going to be equivalent to one tenth. We're going to talk about this more in the next video. So in our next lesson, 9.3, we're going to talk about decimals that are equivalent to each other. And remember, if you want to comment, 
you can always go to my Facebook page, and there's a link in the description, or to Minds.com, and you can comment there. Have a wonderful day. Bye.